Welcome back. Before the break, we were talking to our distinguished guest today, Mr. Imran Chaudhary, about the liberation war of Bangladesh. See, he was a young man, but he had carried the impression, and he still remembers vividly those memorable days and obviously nights. But we move on, we move on. and uh, Mr. Imran Chaudhary, you studied history as an external student at Dhaka University. What, what uh, interested you that uh, in, in history and why did you go to history? Because I think by then you had possibly worked as an officer in the army. Yes, uh, I, I did. Uh, I was commissioned in Bangladesh Army in uh -huh. 1983 uh -huh. uh, in the Spengal Regiment. And, um, in you were there for a very short time. Yeah, very short time. Uh, I was um, in BMA. I did um, graduation. As an instructor also? No, 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 no. I'll come into that. But uh, in BMA, Bangladesh Military Academy, I did yeah. my graduation where right. I studied history. Mm -hmm. But I was always fascinated with history. I always wanted to be a teacher mm -hmm. because it's something that runs in my family. Right. But uh, in the context of Bangladesh, it's a very patriarch society. Their father decides who is going to be what. So. Uh, my father said, you can't study well, most, uh, arts. Most, most ah, you, have to, uh, ah, <laughs> you have to study science. Then chakri pavana. So I had to study science. But <laughs> when I got my opportunity and independence, I opted for history. Uh, yes, I was in the Bangladesh Army and uh, I was a lieutenant. Uh, and I left about after three and a half years of commission service. But mm -hmm. within that short span of time, I... I was perhaps the most junior most instructor in the Bangladesh Army mm -hmm. on the day I was posted as an instructor class C mm -hmm. uh, in Army School of Education and Administration in Saithpur. And uh, before that, I went for that course to do junior officers administration course. Uh, mm -hmm. It's called JOAC, J-O-A-C, Junior Officers Administration Course. And uh, I did that course, and I, I stood first in that course mm -hmm. with uh, fighting with all senior officers. I was the junior most. And uh, I remember <laughs> in one of the exams of the military law uh, uh, exam, I got 98 out of 100. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I went back to after the course, when I ba went back to the regiment, I was posted within the next two months as an instructor. But when I left Army, I came back and I was, I did my LLB as well in from Dhaka Central Law College uh, in Bijanagar, if you know Bijanagar. <laughs> and then uh, that was as, as, a, as a regular student, but you know, you don't really have to attend too many classes. If right. you I just appear the exam. And then I did a master's in history because mm -hmm. history is something which fascinates me. And I read history from the time of the Herodotus till today. I would, you would be shocked and surprised that uh, the number of uh, dates and years and memories that I have in my brain is a massive storage, big archive in there. Well, some people are genius, some people are not. No, so. I'm not genius or anything. <laughs> I just do remember things. I, yeah. I tend not, not to forget things. That's the thing. <coughs> well, history was never my a strong oh, point. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> we moved to London. Mm. And uh, went into business? No, 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 I moved to London and then initially my plan was to study in mm -hmm. King's College. I was trying to do a diploma in King's College mm -hmm. on history. Right. The intention that I still have, and I will perhaps one day I will do it, I want to do a PhD on the Liberation War, right. not on the war. Yes. Uh, I'm not interested in fighting or killing or deaths or anything. Yeah. I want to do a history on the psychological aspect of it. You see, what happened, I saw the history unfolding in front of my eyes. Right. I was 11 year old, but bear in mind, I was the only one at home. My brother already went to freedom fight. Mm -hmm. Dad was in the freedom fighting. My sister was two years older than me, three years mm -hmm. older than me. Mm -hmm. She was working as a nurse mm -hmm. in Mukti Juddha Hospital in Agartala. I was the only one left at home with three of my brothers and my mother go and fetch the ration at queue, stand in the queue for the ration all day. And when you reach the end of the queue, this is, the shop this is gone. <laughs> and I'm, I'm being honest with you. It, because I was young, they shoved me, put me aside. You know, mm -hmm. discipline is not there. Then uh, taking training <coughs> to go and do reconnaissance, covert reconnaissance. There was a commander, Karim, who used to come and train us. Luckily, the present law minister, Anis, Anis and Anis's brother, Shiraj, 
mm -hmm. Mr. Shah Abdul Haq, they used to live in the same camp. And uh, his brother, Arif, uh, God bless him, he just passed away a few days ago. Him and I, we were trained by this commander to go and do covert reconnaissance for the Mukti Bahinis. We were sent by Sheikh Fazlul Haq, money man in the world. Uh, I'm not at all uh, good for because I'll be breaking your glasses, I'll be breaking everything. Wherever I walk, I, I break things. He said, no, no, just wear a tie and mm -hmm. nice suit and you just walk around in the <coughs> restaurant. <coughs> so I used to do that and I used to help in the bar and yeah. uh, people used to come and write down. I said, you don't have to write, just tell me. I'll remember 15, 16, shanty room, no window, nothing, a tarpaulin on top. And from there to come here and sit and talk to you is a life and a half. SubhanAllah. Thank you. That is Allah's blessing, blessing and uh, His grace. Uh, when did you go into curry business? Ah, curry business, um, when I came to this country, my dad, mm -hmm. dad's friend from his time in, in Silet, he, was, uh, he had five, six restaurants. I, I respect him. I, honestly, I owe him a great deal. I wish my chacha is hearing it or watching it. And he took me to his restaurant and he said, uh, you work with me. I said, I can't, I'm the most clumsiest man in the world. Uh, I'm not at all uh, good for, because I'll be breaking your glasses. I'll be breaking everything. Wherever I walk, I, I break things. He said, no, no, just wear a tie mm -hmm. and nice suit and you just walk around in the <coughs> restaurant. <coughs> so I used to do that and I used to help in the bar. And yeah. uh, People used to come and write down. I said, you don't have to write. Just tell me. I'll remember 15, 16 drinks and I can serve it. I've got vivid mm -hmm. memory. Mm -hmm. And by doing so, I fell in love with the trade. And you know that in those days, they used to be known as governors. You know? The bosses were yeah, called governors. Gov. And I love that name. And short into Gov. Gov, yeah. <laughs> so I always thought, when I have chance, I will open a restaurant. So I invested with my brother, one in Scotland. I had few fingers in different pies nice. and when I left my job and I thought I will open a restaurant so uh, full time and I opened one in 2004 mm -hmm. and I'm still uh, running in the restaurant trade. Uh, the beauty of it is how I see this You're talking about Les Spice. Yeah, Les Spice. You're saying something about uh, the history behind Le. Well, <laughs> There's a history because uh, I'm a student of history and my passion is history. My li life literally revolves around history. So when I opened, wanted to name it, so I thought, what can I name? And I was driving one day from Hertfordshire to Northampton. And I said, in, this, in 1675, long before the British went to India, yeah. They were the spice merchants. No, no, no. The French, uh, French East India Company took over Chandanagar, if you know Chandanagar, which is, I used to, we used to live in Prem Toli in Rajshahi, mm -hmm. which is literally 30 miles upstream the Ganges River. So Prem, uh, Chandanagar was a French enclave mm -hmm. within Bengal long before British went in in 1757. Mm -hmm. So Chandanagar was a French colony and it's, a, it's called protectorate. So from Chandanagar, the spices, dhonia pata, the dry dhonia, the condiments used to be shipped mm. to Paris. And in those days, if you remember, <laughs> in the most uh, Chanzelazé and the most affluent restaurants of mm. Paris, we were actually pre pre preparing food from the spices grown by Mr. Mondol or Mr. Rohim Mia or somebody in Chandanagar area. Yeah. So I thought, why not use the la? Because la is the epitome of uh, the expression of uh, uh, anything to do with uh, French. And secondly, if you look at the name restaurant, itself mm -hmm. is a French word. Yeah. And if you look at the culinary dictionary, 80% of the ingredients, the names, the major plat, and the uh, methodology of cooking, serving, the cuisine, and, uh, comes, cuisine comes from France. So, la from French, spice is the ingredient that I would be dealing with, yeah. and why not me the merchant? So yeah. that is how I embodied the name, conjured it together, and came up with the name La Spice Merchant. Yep. Uh, I wanted to ask you, why did you call it Indian cuisine? Because uh, a lot of people are very national about it. And obviously, I mean, I have, I have heard and people have told me on this show and elsewhere that curry was born in India, 
but it has been made great in Britain. Okay. Nice uh, slogan. Nice slogan. Yes, I, uh, Pizza Hut. Yep. Selling Italian pizza owned by wheat bread. Yep. So Bengali doesn't have, Bengali can we, or, 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 today, tomorrow, uh, have a McDonald's. Bengali owned McDonald's. Yep. The reason I call it Indian, India is not a geographical entity. That's you're, the wrong perception. You're, you're talking about the subcontinent. Yes. India is a mythological segmentation of a geographical area where anything beyond the river Sindh is called Hind. Yep. Because in Persian, uh, Persia, Persian wording or letters, they didn't have S. So yes. they immediately went into Hind. So anything beyond that, up to the Himalayas and in, all the in, way to... In Persian, they have, because they have seen which is S. The later on it came, yeah. but I'm talking about the Persia of Jurastran era, yeah. Cyrus the Greatest yeah. time, when you were looking at 323 BC and beyond, because Alexander came in to India in about 333 or something, if I'm yeah, not it wrong. It was called Hindu. Hindu, 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 Hindu I -N -D -U. Hindu. Yes. yes. And so then they introduced S, so it became Indus. Yes. And the beauty of it is, India was a magnet for immigrants. So every immigrant communities who moved to India, they took one cuisine from their own country. Right. Right. So it enriched the kitchen of India. Right. Now, in, in, in a Bengali kitchen, if you, if you look at the normal day-to-day -day Bengali, we have only four words, dao, kodu, mula, and shak. And the rest of the wordings are coming from Pali or Sanskrit or from Persia, mm -hmm. Far Farsi, mm -hmm. Hindi, Urdu and all that from English. So I don't think the, the food, the indigenous, the organic food of Bengal uh, is not big enough to make a restaurant mm -hmm. cuisine. And the Indian food that we serve, in, if you go to Dhaka, the birani that we serve come from Hyderabad. right? So. We Kach, have Kachi Birani. Kachi Birani comes from Hyderabad. Now, if you go to uh, uh, anywhere in, uh, you know, in even the eggs are all uh, actually Farshis who gave us this uh, pow roti and you know the breads that we have, uh, eggy breads in in Bangladesh. So, these are all Persians. Mm -hmm. If you look at Many other dishes, which the, the, the Turks, when they went into 1204, they probably were the first one, because he's a Turk origin, Afghan Turk. They're the first one probably introduced these shik kebabs and the tandoori chicken and, and, and chicken tikkas. So if you go to Puran Dhaka, it's yeah. the shik kebabs are not with mincemeat. It's the chop, chop, chop of the proper leg of a lamb or leg of um, mutton or beef. So we can take it. I don't think, yes, nationally, I'm, anything to do with Bangladesh, the name Bangladesh, my heart bleeds every time I utter the name. Mm -hmm. So I don't mind uh, Indian restaurant owned by Bangladeshi, but I'm serving eclectic Indian. It's, it encompasses the Gujarati food, it encompasses the Nepalese food, it yeah. encompasses the Bhutanese food, the, uh, the, the North Indian, the Punjabi, and the, you have the Peshwari naan, which is very much a Pashtun thing. So you can't just say uh, it's a Bangladeshi-owned restaurant, but we are perhaps selling an eclectic Indian cuisine. Okay, sir, on that very tasty note, we take a break. Thank you. Thank you very much for being with us and uh, don't go away, we have another segment to run. Thank you. <laughs>